Hi everyone! So as promised, I am going to be showing some of the things that I've hit pan on as well as some of the things that I have pretty good progress on. So it's pan and progress just because there's some things like some highlighters and blush that you don't necessarily hit pan on for a long time but you do have some pretty good usage on it. So I thought that I would just show a variety of things, some stuff that's really well loved and some stuff that's not quite as well loved but you can kind of see what I gravitate towards so I find it interesting. It's almost like little makeup diaries because I can look at some of these palettes for example and be like I know exactly what mood I was in when I was using this. I know the looks that I made using this particular palette and like what was going on so it's kind of cool to reflect back on that. That's been one of the really interesting things this year where I'm not panning a, a palette is that I'm just really gravitating towards specific things at specific moments and it's just been a lot of fun as well. So some of these things are also very messy. <laughs> I did try and clean some of them up but you probably are well aware that I don't really try and clean my palettes if they're full of like powder and stuff. Uh, I will try but sometimes I just end up making it worse. I have powder and stuff all over my hands right now. I even have some like mascara that I just can't get rid of. So just forgive me. Also, I will just throw this in at the very beginning. If you hear some weird noises, it's probably cashmere. Could also be me. I just started some antibiotics uh, for an infection on my head and <laughs> I'm experiencing basically every single side effect. So just a heads up, because I probably won't be able to cut everything out. All right, so let's start with the, no, I'll save the eyeshadow for last. I'll save the funnest stuff for last. Uh, I will do highlighters, because I have a couple of them. So I'll start with kind of the least interesting thing that I have here. Uh, actually, the blushes are probably the least interesting, because I don't have pan on the blush. So the first thing I have here is a highlighter. This is from Milani. This is a strobe light. It's Afterglow in 01. It's an instant glow powder. So I wanted to show this one because I do have a little bit of a dip there and I've worn away quite a bit of the pattern. And that's something that's always really interesting to me. Like I, I like looking at beautiful, pristine, brand new, untouched product. Like those product shots are really beautiful. But there's also something about product that's been used, that's been loved, that you see the pattern beginning to wear away, that you can just really see how much somebody likes something. And this is a highlighter that I really like because it's very luminescent and it's not super glittery. I'd say there's a little fine bit of glitter, just a little bit, but it's not overwhelming. Like some highlighters can be very chunky glittery, I love those as well. I love all highlighters. I love all glitter and shimmer. Hi, cashmere. I love all glitter and shimmers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this particular shade as well I really like because it is a very pale, pearlish shade. And sometimes I can be heavy handed with it and it will end up being sort of stripey, but I like mixing it with some of the other darker highlighters I have that I like, even some of the things that are very metallic or glittery, just to tone it down a little bit so that I still get the intensity of the shimmer on my cheekbones, but without the just noticeable stripe because it's too dark for my skin tone. So anyway, that is the first bit of progress. I might make this a regular thing, maybe do it every couple of months. There won't necessarily be the same product in there, so don't think of this as like a project progress, a project pan, a pan porn, anything like that. Just, well, it is pan porn, but not like a project pan porn. Just because I might not end up gravitating towards the same thing and I'm not really giving myself any restrictions. I'm just rotating through what I feel like. This is one that I've talked about a lot, this particular highlighter. I was trying to avoid some of the things that I've talked about over and over again, but I just feel like this needs to be mentioned. This is from Pixie. This is the Glowy Gossamer Duo in Subtle Sunrise. And one particular part of this highlighter is completely gone at this point because I have used it that much, loved it so much. It was this beautiful, really pale, gold shade that just melted into my skin and it gave me that luminous golden glow but it wasn't the streaky golden glow because it wasn't too deep for my skin it was just perfect um there's another one from pixie as well that's a little bit deeper uh, that would be better suited for for deeper skin tones um if you were curious about the formula i think there is only two unfortunately um and this particular shade this pink shade on this side i have some usage on it 
obviously not as much as the other half of it but I still really like it and I will mix this one with the Milani sometimes as well. That's kind of what I've been using recently has been the Milani and it's been this one. I will occasionally put something else in there but these are the things that I gravitate towards the most. I will occasionally use the other Pixie one as well. Just the formula is so beautiful. My problem is I like to be too heavy handed which doesn't work if a product is dark. I can use just like a little tiny bit and maybe think I can get away with it but I just like to load up the highlight. I will have a completely neutral face and I'll think, yeah, this is good, almost like a no makeup makeup thing. And then I just load on the highlighter. Like I just can't stop. It's an addiction. I just love it. I just, I just love the shimmer and the glow. It's just one of those steps that just make me so happy. So anyway, this highlighter is perfect. This is just, I wish they sold just this side of it. I would buy a giant, huge pan of just this side of this highlighter because it's just one of the best things I've ever used. I will say that this will also be a very ravey video just because these are things that I've been using a lot of and things that I really like. This does not mean that you need these things. Just keep that in mind. What works for me may not work for you and that's completely okay. You probably have stuff that you really love using and reaching for as well. I'm showing this mainly so that you could get an idea of the things that I've been using and the things that I've been liking and kind of how my makeup preferences might have changed and adapted over the last few months and also just maybe to give a little inspiration for the pan porn because I know people like that stuff as well but just because I'm raving about something doesn't mean that I'm telling you to go buy it I just want to just make that very clear this is something that was limited edition a while ago and something that I still will reach for because I really do like it this is from Anastasia Beverly Hills it is one of the glow kits it's the ultimate glow kit and there's a lot of golden shades in here. Now, I completely, finally finished the snow shade. Snow? Yes, I keep wanting to call it pearl, like the Becca highlighter. Uh, I finally finished that one. I was holding on to it because I really liked it. And I thought that I wouldn't end up using the golden shades if I didn't have the white shade in here. And I'm not opposed to putting some of the Becca highlighter in pearl, the white shade in this to use this up a little bit more, but I don't think I really need to because I can use this with other things and I will occasionally use this as like a light layer on my eyes as well, even try and uh, highlight with it. This is something that I've been doing recently is just putting like a light wash of glitter kind of like underneath my brow bone and in my inner corner because I can't get enough glitter. And sometimes it's just enough, it's just enough little shimmer that it makes me happy, even though it's not brightening. It doesn't have that same kind of effect, but it's just that little bit of shimmer that just, it makes me happy. So, um, I've also, I've hit pan on since the last time I showed this, I think hot sand, this shade here. I don't know. I've pan on three of the shades as well. So I've one completely finished and pan on three. And then the more yellowy shades, I haven't used a whole lot. These are definitely the ones that I gravitate towards the most. Uh, Amber Gold is probably my next favorite in this palette. It's exactly what it sounds like. Amber Gold. I feel like the names are very true to what they are. You know, White Sand, Sun Ray, uh, Golden Dawn, Hot Sand. Like, they're very appropriate names and they're, they're very true. And the ones that are a little bit more peachy and a little paler, like the White Sand, uh, are definitely ones that I feel like are a little bit more workable for me, where Golden Dawn and Sunray are just a little too yellow and really just give me that, sh that stripe effect, but they can be really pretty, just sort of lightly put on top of the lid. Like I'll use it with my uh, highlighter brush and I use a Morphe M501. I'm not an affiliate. I just really love that highlighter brush. It's just my favorite thing to use for highlighter. I feel like it really can pile it on pretty thick. That's what I love. But I will use that brush to like just lightly over like underneath my brow bone area and it just gives that light little wash there which I just really enjoy and I just uh, this is such a good video to film because I just love raving about things that I love using. So uh, let's do blush. So these are, I said, are not very exciting. Um, I have a Milani blush. This is Color Harmony Pink Play. So there's not a whole lot to see here. Just again, more subtle usage. This is a very pretty, pretty pink blush. So lately I've been using the Natasha Denona Blush and Bloom palette a lot, uh, but this is what I was using before I had that. This is the pink 
lash I was using the most of. I've really come to love Milani. I find myself reaching for the Milani stuff all the time because it works so well. The highlighter, the blush, they really are beautiful. And this, I just like swirling my brush around in it, my blush brush, and I get a really beautiful, even pink shade that just flatters a lot of different looks that I would do. Uh, it wouldn't be anything that would pull too warm or too cool. It's a fairly neutral shade. And that's what I really enjoyed about it because sometimes it can be difficult to pair the blush. And now recently I haven't cared and I've just been using the Natasha blush with everything, but doesn't mean I should do that. It's just what I want to do. Speaking of Natasha blush though, I do have this blush duo. So this is the blush duo palette number nine. So it's got Tutu and Matte Peachy Nude. So this is pretty powdery. Uh, this is a lighter shade and a deeper shade and when I wanted something a little orangey for certain eye looks, this is the blush I was reaching for all the time. Um, there wasn't really a pattern on there but you can see a slight dip so you can see the usage in there and sometimes I would mix the two together just to lighten it up a little bit if I went too heavy with the darker peachy shade which I often did, I'll be honest. But if you've seen any of my Get Ready With Me's, you'll know that I take a foundation brush, like the same brush I use to apply my foundation, to tone down the blush on my face as well, just a little bit, especially if I brought the blush too far in. And that's a really good tip that I would give if you think you go too heavy with the blush and you're not about that look, and you're like, what can I do here? I would just lightly go over the top of it. Like if you don't want to take everything off, just lightly go over the top of it with your blush brush or your sponge. You can even use a clean brush as well just to kind of buff away. And I found that it just worked really well for me and I can get the blush placement exactly where I want it and I can tone down the intensity of the blush as well. But this blush has served me really well when I need the orangey peachy flush. All right, so finally we have a bronzer. This is from Pixi. This is the Gilded Bear Glow. So it's one of the Pixi Glow Cakes. So it's got sort of a highlighter, a blush, and a bronzer. I focus mostly on this side. As you can clearly see, I just hit baby pan on it today. Uh, it was really exciting. I was like, this is the perfect sign to do this video today. <laughs> just a little tiny baby pan. Um, you might have seen me use the Kevin Aquan one before where I completely used up the bronzer side. It was much smaller than this, but it was the same sort of concept. And this is nothing new. It's just that it looks really pretty. It's a beautiful gradient, but I don't really have a purpose for this side. Like I've definitely tried using this as a highlighter on its own and it's just so lackluster especially compared to like the other pixie one and uh, that's just really shimmery but this is really pretty to layer together and I like having a little bit of the pink in with the bronzer so that it's not too orange and it doesn't get too muddy and I find that things blend pretty well and I can get the bronze look that I like without being too noticeably bronze that's the problem i've always had with sort of like contour shades and bronzer shades is that they were they would just look wrong or or too much compared to the rest of me but with this style i feel like it just blends everything a little bit more seamlessly and it looks a little bit more natural and i can put a little bit more on if i want to and i will sometimes Put a little bit more bronzer on if i want to use a little bit more of a darker highlighter and if i'm really going for that sort of like sun-kissed thing which is what i've kind of been about recently this is pretty much the most dramatic sort of neutral makeup i've done for a while this is basically what i had on today except for i just added lashes uh, this seemed to be a hit with people people were really fond of this look today i got a lot of compliments on it and it's just a very simple look it's like three eyeshadows and a lot of bronzer and a lipstick and a lip liner I will put it in a comment or something down below in case people are curious what I actually use, but it's really very simple and I'm sure you can do 100% of everything. But anyway, I love this and I just thought it'd be fun to show a little baby band. All right, we're in the home stretch now. I have five eyeshadow palettes. So the first one I have here is my Natasha Denona Tropic palette. Though I previously had this in Project Pamporn and I was attempting to use some of these matte shades as blushes, which was pretty short lived once I discovered other things. Um, I do have pan on Lemoncello, which I believe I had pan on before. And I also have pan on Mint Frost. This is such a beautiful blue shade and I'm looking at it and I can just remember all the times I was doing the blue 
lower lash line and then the pinky warm eyelid. I definitely went through a phase where I was doing that quite a bit. I was really loving the intense frosty blue on the lower lash line and the pink on the lid and it was something that I think I wore for like three weeks straight. <laughs> it was just something that I really, I really enjoyed it. It was just such a good simple look and sometimes when I get into a certain look I will just find myself doing it over and over again just because it becomes easy all the products end up being out in front of me so I just end up doing the same thing over and over again uh, but yes this this palette I still really like uh, I've had a little bit of struggle with uh, the matte baby blue sky blue shade and the pale purple shade um, I use this shade a few times uh, Xena and it ended up being kind of faded and a little patchy um, after a few hours of wear but everything else was fine it just seems to be these two particular colorful matte shades that were giving me the problems now but this palette's a little bit older some people have been asking me about my thoughts on this palette and I still really do like it but I definitely notice more flaws now than I did before how about another Natasha Denona palette this is my newest one and this is the Natasha Denona gold palette yes I already have a little pan on the Natasha Denona Gold palette. So a lot of these shades don't have a whole lot of usage on them. They definitely have some dips. You can definitely see what I've used in this palette, but I actually, I have a little baby pan. It's gonna be probably hard to see um, just because of the nature of the shadow, but on Lime Chrome, I do have some pan because I was using this quite a bit as well. This was from a few months back. Um, I'm not swatching them, just the shades, because I'm like, I'm not trying to sell you guys on this. This is just such a unique shadow, and this is why I really like it, because it's a unique shade, and I was layering it on top of other shadows, uh, just because it gives that cool reflect. I almost put it on top of this look today, but then I was like, let's not, let's, let's take a step back. Um, I had to stop using it because I felt like it was kind of a crutch, like I would just slap on some bronze shadow and then like layer that on top of it and I was doing the same thing and I wasn't really enjoying it after a while like I liked it at first but this kind of shade I like using it sparingly I don't like it using it very often because I feel like it loses some of its special attraction and a lot of people will ask about this shadow as well and it's hard to explain and you kind of are talking about the palette and Natasha Denona and a lot of people just don't understand like I'm everyday people they just don't get it um because it's definitely so unique that everybody wants to know what it is and everybody wants it but not everybody can buy it or not everybody's willing to pay so much money for a palette for one unique shade so it just got a little frustrating I guess having to constantly explain myself because people were always really curious about that particular shadow but I do really love this palette and I'm trying to reach for it a little bit more I just have been reaching for other things and I'm trying just not to rely entirely on Natasha Denona which can be so easy because I love the shadow so much but I've been having fun using other things as well. The Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. So not a whole lot has changed since my update I did a while back for my Project Pan Porn. Um, I just have a lot more gone of Lombre. This shadow is so good. I just really love the gold pinky duochromatic shades. These are the things that I love putting on my lid and then putting like one of these orangey reddish shades um, in the crease or in the lower lash line. I was using this palette with the Just Peachy Mattes from Too Faced as well because like the, the light peachier shades are just so beautiful and I like bringing out the, the pinker tones because you, you can pair like a mustard shade with it to bring out more of the gold shades but I just really have been into like the pink eyes just glamorous pink eye um and then i can i will use this shade as well ember um if i'm feeling something a little bit more darker i will just put ember everywhere and smoke it out and a lot of black eyeliner and that's kind of my go-to dark look when i just can't really think about what I want to do just because Ember is such a unique shade as well. Um, as I described it when I did a review, it's like when you uh, would run like a pen on a, the arm of an office chair. It just, it's such a weird thing to say, but that's what this shadow is and I really love using that. So this palette has definitely been in constant rotation for the last couple of months. Now, this is very similar to the Naked Heat palette. This is from Morphe. This is the uh, Happy Hour palette, 15 pan. So I haven't used this a whole lot, but I have used one particular shade in here 
this shade right here, Hot Spot, which is basically another version of Lombre. It is a beautiful duochromatic pinkish gold shade, rose gold shade, shall we say. Um, and I haven't really been using a whole lot of the other shadows in this palette. I will use the gold shades a little bit, but this particular shade, I will gravitate towards this palette and I will use it as well with the uh, Just Peachy Mattes palette for the matte shades to blend it all out. I just, I can't get enough. And that's what I'm finding is that I think I'm just gonna have to have a little collection of like rose gold, golden duochromatic shadows because I just find myself reaching for them all the time. They are light enough that I get that brightness to my eye, but yet they're unique enough that I feel like I'm still having some fun playing with my makeup. And it's just, it's, it's all the things that I like. So it's like the best of all worlds, which is why I keep going back to those particular shadows. It's so good. And I do enjoy the Morphe Metallics. I don't really like the mattes. I find them not so good, but the metallic shades applied with Fix Plus I, I, some of these might look weird, by the way, because I use Fix Plus with all the like metallic shades for more intensity and better control, and these work so well with the Fix Plus. I love the way they look, last all day, beautiful reflection, and makes me very happy. Definitely happy hour. All right, and to end this off, I have the ColourPop Yes Please palette. So I depotted this and put this into a Z palette because the packaging just got destroyed, and it's still kind of messy. I will say, these matte ColourPop shadows, I do find to be pretty powdery and a little bit messy. Um, as they age, they seem to be better, but uh, the metallic shades are what I live for. And this, I don't have a whole lot of progress here from uh, when this was in Project Handborn before. The golden shade still has pan on it, obviously, and then the creamy matte beigey color has a little pan in it. Uh, really good for blending out edges. I haven't been much into setting my eyeshadow primer recently, but I do like shades like this for blending out edges because um, sometimes with the Fix Plus metallic shades, it can just be really heavy and there can be like little jagged lines and just a little bit of shadow that's kind of close to my skin tone works to kind of blend that out just a little bit. Um, but this is sort of my happy time palette. And I find that whenever I'm in a good mood, I, I tend to reach for this palette much like the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette as well, which is a very similar color scheme. Um, I just like to wear the yellows and the shimmery oranges and the reds. Like I just, there's something about the sunset shades when I'm in a good mood that I always end up going for and I end up doing kind of a very similar look. Um, but I, I just really love it. Like this particular sort of mandarin-y shade is really beautiful on the lid. So I put that on the lid and have a little bit of the yellow matte shade in the crease and then a little bit of the orange shade as well as so like maybe in the outer portion of the crease and a little bit on the outer lower lash line and maybe even a little bit of the gold. Just like beautiful sunset colors and I like doing it like the traditional sort of sunset thing um, with the brown on the outer corner and then going into a little bit of the orange and then the yellow or the gold so that it really just looks very autumnal, very sunrise or sunset, however you want to look at it. And that's why I wanted to include this in this video because when I look at this and the usage I have on here, it just reminds me about the good times. And I know whenever I'm in the best possible mood set, I go for the really, really bright shimmery summery colors and the things that remind me the most of nature and the things that I like, like sunrises and sunsets and the autumnal colors of falling leaves and all that stuff. The stuff that really speaks to me that I can relate to makeup in that way and that I just want to have advertised on my face. Like I feel like if you ever see me wearing a lot of orange and yellow and gold all at once, I really am radiating that positivity, that energy. I just feel it. Like I just, it's something that I don't even necessarily think about. I just do because it's just what I look at. What I'm looking for is something, when I'm putting makeup on, I'm looking for something that's relating to the mood that I'm in. And sometimes it's a little bit darker. Sometimes it's a little grungy and a little messier if I'm, you know, not having the greatest day. <laughs> but sometimes I'm having a good day and I still feel like being a little bit messy. But sometimes it's just nice to be happy and feel like content. And that's what this palette represents for me. That might be kind of a cheesy way to end this, 
but it's just very true. <laughs> I spent like the last hour and a half in my room lip syncing to Celine Dion, so that's the kind of mood I'm in as well. I feel like I probably could have worn a lot of orange and yellow today. I'm just, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. So I, I wanna keep that, I wanna keep that up. So anyway, let me know what you've hit pan on recently or what you're hoping to hit pan on soon. If you've hit pan on any of the things that I've used or if you're currently using them and maybe you have some ideas for color combinations, suggestions, ideas, let me know and let everyone else know as well because I love hearing from you guys and I love hearing what sort of things you pair together because you've given me so much inspiration and I'm always looking for more. And if you have any other ideas for videos you'd like to see from me, anything for my no-buy, low-buy, panning, uh, pan horn, whatever, make sure to let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I hope we get a chance to chat soon. Bye for now.